All right, hopefully it's recording. Oh, yeah, I see it. Yeah, okay, great. Better Thanks late than never. All right, so these are, these are some of the common marketing mistakes. Not having a strategy or a plan, spaghetti marketing, just picking something and, and trying it because other people are doing it. I see a lot of people doing that with social media, wasting a ton of time and effort and, and not getting results. Like I was talking to another business coach and she said she's doing Facebook every day and the same five people are liking her stuff. <laughs> you know, she's not getting any clients. So, um, and then the other thing is we really want to look at the lifetime valuation of a client and, you know, Stacy, I'll use you and your sign business as an example. I, I, as I was driving to work, I saw Ace Hardware sign and they're like, you know, big giant red sign with white letters, you know, a temporary vinyl sign saying, yes, we're open for business. Um, and people are going to need those. Um, as people are driving by, we need things that are going to catch their attention. And then, so from a lifetime valuation standpoint is, you know, if they're having a special or something happens and we need to be six feet apart, they need sticker signs to put on the floor, you know, so who are, who are the ideal clients that are going to, we're going to serve them over and over and over again. The other thing you're doing, Stacy, is the high school graduation signs. Mm -hmm. you know, hopefully we won't have to do that for, for many years, but building the relationship and having the courage to build a relationship with the high school, you might be able to provide all kinds of signs for, for clients like that. Mm -hmm. So it, what happens when we think about the lifetime valuation of a client, um, like if I think about what's somebody paying for a month of group coaching, then I can't have a very big budget for, <laughs> for my business. Um, so one and done and trying to do, you know, SEO or, or pay-per-click or any of those things that cost money, um, you're going to lose because the people that think big picture and long-term are going to spend more money, you know, wisely, appropriately, and they're going to get results because they're thinking um, bigger picture. And it's oftentimes fear and scarcity that stops us from spending what we should. And I really want to make a caveat. I'm not saying, uh, you know, one of the rules of thumb for a marketing budget is four to 10% of gross income or your gross income goal. Now that can be a pretty big number. And I don't, I don't at all recommend starting with that number. So start small, do small scale experiments until, you know, like let's see Facebook ads or pay-per-click, you wanna change your title, change your image, change the content, um, change the colors, experiment until you get 300, 400, 500% ROI, you know, for the lifetime valuation of a client and then scale it up. So I love, I love the model, you know, try, Try, tweak, um, measure, and then scale. And then the the other big mistake, and and we'll go into this in the in the near future, is thinking that you can serve everyone. Can we can we help everyone? Yeah, but not everybody wants our help. Not everybody's ready for our help. Not everybody can afford our help. And when we narrow down the population to 10% of the population, then we make our marketing 10 times more effective for the money, time, and energy that we're spending. The other mistake I see on a lot of website homepages, especially um, uh, technicians or, or service, people that provide services, is they talk about their, their college degree, their years of experience, their credentials, blah, blah, blah. And that can go on the about page, but even the about page should have more U's than I's on it. And the home page should be, you know, grab their attention, you know, compassionately relate to the challenge or problem that they're facing. What do they have that they don't want in their life? And then what are their goals, dreams? What's in it for them? So, so if we come from what's in it for them and then have a clear cut call to action to get them started, then our, our copywriting is gonna work much better. And again, we'll go into much more of that. 
I'm not going to go into the marketing keys today because I want to do some one-on-one -on -one coaching and really help accelerate you guys. Um, but I'll save this slide for next time. But again, we touched, touched on strategy. I guess I'll go through it real quick. Um, <laughs> strategy is really key um, to make your marketing 10 times more effective and spend that time. Recently, even though I've been in business for 15 years, recently I spent four hours with another coach going through my whole strategy, my marketing strategy and revamping it. So even experts need, you know, outside help with that. USP is a unique selling proposition. So how, how do you really differentiate yourself from the competition? You know, look at 10, 10 different uh, websites. So Corinne, look at 10 different, say, we'll just start with bookkeeping or, or business coaching and look at their websites and, most of them, nine out of 10 of them are gonna say the same thing. So we need to come up with things that are truly different and, and use that in our marketing. So, so Jacob, I know, um, and hopefully this is okay to share, but as a, ki as a kid, um, you had trouble paying attention and, um, you know, and focusing. And, and some other things going on in your life and martial arts made a huge difference. You know, so I think if you look at martial arts websites, they're going to largely say the same thing. But early on, when I got to know you and heard your story, really encouraging, you know, like right now, encouraging the people that are staying at home and trying to teach their kids and, and work at home, like, you could be a savior that like for kids with ADD. So really narrowing down the target market and then saying what's having a different message grabs people's attention is really effective. Mm -hmm. We talked about target market, um, the user experience and the, the copywriting. Um, that's a big Google factor these days. And I've always thought, you know, from an SEO perspective, search engine optimization that do it the old fashioned way. Provide things that are valuable, useful, helpful. Um, lost my train of thought. Uh, user experience. So make it easy for them to find what they want. Have uh, helpful, valuable information. And then a clear call to action. That's what CTA is. Um, nowadays, website, not just having a website, but having your, your website visible. And it really takes being in those top three spots on the first page in order to get, you know, search traffic um, or, or ads can do that in, in the short period of time if you have the budget. All right, so um, again, I'm gonna quickly go through what are some free solutions that we can, we can start with right now. Jim? Um, yeah. Can I ask you a quick question before Please. you move on to this one? So just in relation to marketing, right? So one of the things that I, don't have a clear understanding of, you know, because marketing, especially in the digital space, not my area of expertise in any way. So if we're looking at developing a strategy, I guess, right, there should be some component of, you know, how much of that needs to be SEO focused versus how much of that can be PPC focused in terms of your budget and managing that. And so is there a what would you say is the best approach for newer businesses in terms of where they allocate their dollars for each of those items? Okay. I'm just, I'm just going to use those two tactics as an mm -hmm. example. And thank you for that question. It's great. Um, Cause I think it's really confusing for a lot of people. Um, like I, well, one thing to know about search engine optimization is it really depends on the keyword phrases that you're optimizing for. And if you're using keyword phrases with way too much competition that's been around for a long time, you may mm -hmm. never get to that first page of Google. So having someone do appropriate keyword research and competition analysis is the key that most people miss in search engine optimization and in pay-per-click. So when I do that for clients, I look at, I look at traffic, obviously, but usually with higher traffic comes higher competition. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of SEO people are going to recommend high traffic keywords because they're going to be able to charge more mm. um, in order to do what it takes to beat that competition. 
And you may not need that much competition. What I look for is the chinks in the armor of the medium or kind of lower competition. So traffic, um, monetization value, pay-per-click is a good indication of that. And then the comp competition. Mm -hmm. um, and Google, Google keyword tool you can use, but the competition values aren't really relevant to the, the true strength of a competition. So I have special software that looks at 20 different factors. Um, so there's, yeah, there's a few people that, that can do that well, but that's the first step. And the other thing to know without getting into too much techie detail is SEO can take six months, 12 months to really work. But once it works, it's awesome. So a newer business having a combination of doing SEO with good keyword research um, in parallel with pay-per-click is a good strategy. Okay. And, and I'll, I'll do, a, I'll probably do a whole lecture on SEO or, or just how to get organic traffic and better rankings. What can you do? Um, but right now, that that leads into so i think does that answer your question as far as those at least those two it does i, I mean i have a million follow-up questions but yeah. we don't necessarily i'm not going to take over all the rest of your time asking those questions right now <laughs> and you. and i'm just going to say say this and this mm -hmm. is isn't a sales pitch but i have a book on amazon if you just type in 47 seo secrets jim kaspari you can find it. It's 20 bucks. It's about $500 worth of SEO information. And, and I don't recommend reading the book and doing it yourself. I recommend, right. recommend reading the book so that you can find the right person for your team. Right. Do the right due diligence. And when they're giving you monthly reports to know what the heck they're talking about. Um, so that's one idea. And it's not, it's not, I have an SEO book that's, that's this thick on my shelf. <laughs> I have to admit that I haven't read it. <laughs> this book is only pages, so it's 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 digestible and 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 it's written in <coughs> non techie English. Mm -hmm. uh, so hopefully that I did. I just try to give resources when I can't e explain the whole thing in a in one call. Thank you. So so speaking of of things that interrelate and things that are that are free, the number one marketing tool is doing a great job and treating people well and having super high quality products. It always has been the number one marketing tool and it always will be. So I always presence that, you know, like there was a, there was a dentist in, in Roseville that wanted me to do SEO for him. And I didn't let him hire me because he had really poor reviews. And I was just honest with him. I said, you know, until you improve your reputation and you, you treat people right or, or, or train your staff to treat people right, um, it's not ethical for me to help you. And anyway. I, that must have been a very interesting conversation. <laughs> oh, God. It's, it's so hard for me to be honest. Uh -huh. You know, but, but in order to really serve that guy, he needed to hear that. Yeah, that I can definitely see how that had to be the first problem to tackle. Ooh, yeah, you're right, though. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Good Lord. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, so so it, unless that's in place um, and now's a good time to talk about my model of what we put out there, the message that we put out there, I call that um, external perception. So if we put out a flyer or we do a, a BNI infomercial or our website homepage or about page that should match that's that's what we're putting out there and then there's uh so that's the external perception or ep and then there's the ir which is the internal reality of our business so i highly recommend us looking at our business and saying how can we truly be better than the competition so that's the internal reality. So as I was starting my web design business, I listened to people and what were they complaining about webmasters? Um, you know, like, well, we got, I, I had my, my sister's son do my website and he got it halfway done and then disappeared or 
you know, I don't have admin access to my website. I can't update my website myself. Um, you know, so I listened to those complaints and then I structured my business and processes so that people, they have admin access. They can update their own site if they want, you know, if something happens to me or, or one of my team members, you know, they have, they have, I'm, they're not held hostage by me. It's their website, their hosting, you know, they, they don't have to do anything, <laughs> but, but I just took the complaints out in the industry and the paradigms. And then I shifted my internal reality. So now when I talk about that business, I can say that. And now my, instead of platitudes or saying what everybody else says, I'm actually saying something different that stands out. So that's, that's, uh, that's like the principle behind marketing. And so if you don't know what those challenges or problems are or the dreams and goals of your clients, or even who your ideal client is surveying is something you can do for free. Now I call this test marketing. You know, what are the challenges or problems that, that people have in their life, in their business that you can help them with? What are the dreams, goals, desires, and wants? And, and, yeah, so those are really the main survey questions. Another great survey question is if you were looking for somebody who had products or services like mine, what would you type into Google? Another great question is if you were looking for products or services like mine, where would you look? So those four questions, four questions, you can do that in five minutes, maybe 10 minutes. So make some dates interview 10, 20 people. And now you're going to have a clearer, more powerful message and you're going to know who you can serve more. And you're going to know some marketing tactics to start with. You want to, you want to be visible where people are looking and you want to get your message to the right people. So surveying test marketing. And the other thing is while you're surveying, what are you doing? You're marketing. And it's an unthreatening way to reach out to people that you don't know. You know, Stacy, I know you're doing some great, bold, courageous outreach. This might be a, a tool that you can use and say, you know, hey, Mr. Jones, um, I know you don't know me. I'm, I'm uh, whatever you want to say. I, I have a relatively new business and I'm, I'm serving some people that are well-respected in, in the neighborhood, in the Folsom area. Now, um, do you have 10 minutes to do a quick survey? And that's a way to get, get in the door. Oftentimes getting past the gatekeeper is, is tough. So I love this idea. And people that are afraid of doing bold, courageous outreach, which we all need to do in our business. Um, this is another, it's, a, it's just a great way to get the, get the word out there and build new relationships. And, and, you get relationships with some people and you do a great job and then they're going to refer you more people and it becomes this exponential growth. So that, that's actually, why I really, I actually think becoming a uh, very establishing that relationship with the gatekeeper is a great strategy because <laughs> I know, honestly, coming from corporate America, you know, I, I had a fantastic admin at one point and the power of an admin in a, in a corporate business is incredible. I mean, they really do control things. <laughs> oh, they're, they're fantastic <laughs> at, at protecting the decision maker. Mm -hmm. And so that is a really good point. I think it's worth mm -hmm. expanding on. Thank you, Stacy. Um, so we want to, so if you're, if your target is the CEO of a company and they have an executive assistant, all of a sudden your marketing message is going to change. What's the pain or what's the frustration that that executive assistant has? What are her, his or her dreams and desires? Exactly. Um, so they, what they want is they, they want their boss to be happy. They want to look good in the eyes of their boss. They want to create opportunities. So if you, you shift your message to what's in it for the admin, you know, how can you take away their pain? How can you make them look good? How can you make them feel good? How can you help them get what they want? And if, if you have a message where you're saying, you know, I can, I can help, help your business, blah, blah, blah. Uh, anyway, you get the idea. So, so 
treating gatekeepers well. I know some people that come, have come up with some wonderful creative gifts. They brought flowers, they bought cookies, you know, um, we might want to wait a couple of months to do things like that, but <laughs> you get the idea. <laughs> but yeah, it, they deserve as much or more respect than the decision maker. So that's a super, super important point. Thanks, Stacy. Mm -hmm. The other thing we can do is create videos. We have all the equipment we need. You can record Zoom, you can use your phone, but people relate to people. The other thing is uh, most people are afraid of doing videos. So if, if that's you and I'm, I'm there with you, that's um, me. It, it, we just got to start doing it. You know, Stacy, I'm thinking, you know, do a quick video with your son's high school sign posted on Facebook. And that's oh, I actually did a little snippet when it was printing yeah. off of the printer, which was great because I didn't have to be on camera. Right. So yeah, that was the very first video I did. It went out on LinkedIn. It went out on my Facebook page. And great. I'm like, oh, God. light yeah. bulb, I got to do more of this stuff. Jacob, that, that <laughs> workout yesterday was awesome. I loved it. Um, so yeah, record parts of it or, and then, you know, send out little snippets to your social media platform. People love videos. The other thing is from, a, I know that I won't go into the, the complexity of it, but Google owns YouTube. So I'll let you make your own conclusion on whether <laughs> videos are a good idea. Um, LDLs, that stands for local directory listings. And when I look at uh, online marketing approach, I look at your website as the central hub of the business. And then any links coming back to your website makes your website more powerful. So you do want to get on Google My Business for sure. And you want to get five-star reviews. And that's free. That's where the image, the five-star here. That's something I highly encourage on a, a couple times a week. You know, ask your excited, happy clients to do five-star reviews. And Yelp and Google are, are the two that will rise you to the top. You know, if you type in Folsom Business Coach, you'll see like five different listings um, for my business because I've used this strategy. So, you know, whether it's Merchant Circle or just type in, um, uh, let's see, Corinne, we can just start with bookkeeping because that's, that's something that you do. I know you want to go into business coaching and and uh, holistic health as well. But if you just type in bookkeeper in your town, you'll see people's individual websites, but you'll also see directory listings that are relevant to that keyword phrase. And oftentimes you can get two or three listings on the first page of Google and bump your competition off the first page. So that's a, a really powerful tool. The other thing is power partners. And the tip here is, Ask yourself, who else has my target market but doesn't compete with me? So, so Jacob, I'm thinking, you know, let, uh, if you take the target market of kids with ADHD, just as an example, who else serves that target market? So you could reach out to psychologists, um, other ideas, and even in the in the fitness realm, partnering partnering with chiropractors or partnering with nutritionists you know who else who else serves that target market and, but doesn't compete with you and and i will say also that sometimes our competitors are great power partners you know they don't understand team and leverage and they get booked and then they they want somebody to send people to because they can't take any more capacity or they want to go on vacation so, so reaching out and, and building relationships with that is, is a highly leveraged free marketing tool. And then I've mentioned social media, but just, you know, be, be responsible with it. It's, it's designed to be addictive. So you go on there to post something and then you don't spend a 45 minutes there it is not, not a good business practice. So that's, that's what I have for today for, uh, for the presentation. Why don't we jump into some specific questions that can really help accelerate you?
going back to that paper that you sent out uh, to think about, um, I think I've asked some of my questions. I'll have some more come to me in just a minute. <laughs> All right. Any questions? Or just just could be a topic like so here's some feeder ideas. Where are you stuck? Yeah. Oh gosh, I was thinking about this yesterday and I was going to bring it up and now my mind is going blank. Um stuck and frustrated. Uh, I hate when this happens. Yeah, anybody can ask anything. <laughs> <laughs> this is stump the coach time. I know. I, know. I, I, I feel like I'm stuck. Um, well, we kind of did talk about it a little bit, you know, just in that place right now of, of feeling like we're getting, you know, I, I'm seeing a little bit more traction. And some of this is probably simply just because the yard signs are, you know, um, keeping us busy. Mm -hmm. um, and it's a lot of busy, busy work. You know, I'm grateful for it. I'm grateful for all of the connections that I'm making because of it. Um, from a income perspective, they're obviously not huge dollars there to do yard signs. Um, but again, I, you know, I, I do appreciate all the connections. So, so I'm in this place of like, I feel like I'm busy trying to just get that stuff done. Um, and I feel like I need to start thinking mm -hmm. ahead about being busier and having a, more help come in, but also um, just not being able to really afford it right now, given the situation. So okay, you know, I, 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 I think I can add, uh, add some value there. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I would say if, if you don't have the budget and, and these are low income jobs, you know, you're gonna continue, I know you, you're gonna continue with, to come up with, you know, what are some of the bigger ticket items how can we how can we build relationships? But those are longer term strategies. Mm -hmm. So I would say, take the pressure off yourself. I think, like I said, we want to think strategically, but let's leverage with the money and the time that we have. Let's leverage what we have. So I love that you're grateful for what you have. So I would take these these lawn signs, the high school signs, whatever you're doing now and just just like play full out in in your customer service and your communication like you already do you you have great attention to detail your signs are awesome if it isn't perfect you make it right so keep, do those things but but leverage say hey do you know any like here's a leverage thing that only takes a few seconds or minutes maybe and that's asking for the five star reviews asking for testimonials, asking for video testimonials, asking them to share your posts to their people on social media. And then the other thing is, hey, do they know any business owners that are struggling or they're just opening back up and they might need some signs? So you notice how we, we take what might not be a big money maker and balloon it out without, without having to do big strategic initiatives. Yeah, it's a challenge to get <clears throat> people to follow through with the reviews, um, you know, because I do send when I close out a job, send a follow up with the link to Google asking for the review with the the plug that, you know, we'll be posting out about your business on our social media pages because I mean, usually we'll take photos when we can. Sometimes we can't, but I'll ask them to send me a photo I'm like we'll be happy to put that out. You know, you help promote me and if you want to get a moment, go take care of that Google review for me, but it's been a challenge getting people to follow through on that. Yeah. So I hear that all the time from people. And so we can't control other people's behaviors, but we can keep asking. And what I've found is, is you want to get them while they're hot. Mm -hmm. So what I mean by that is, is, you know, we all do great work. Um, when people are like giddy, super excited, catch them then and just say, Hey, I'm, I'm super psyched. This was really fun working with you. Um, 
if if you wouldn't mind, would you mind writing a, a five star review? Like do that over the phone or in person, um, and then send them the link. And and what I do, and I think you already do this, but just for everybody else, I send them just a, a sentence or two saying, oh my God, it was so much fun working with you on X project. Uh, and, or, you know, I think this will help your business, you know, get, get more street traffic or, you know, whatever the sign's doing for them. And then just a couple of links directly to where they can write the review. And then the other thing I add is, here's a couple of testimonials that other people have wrote, wrote, written if you wanna plagiarize or have writer's block. So then you're, you're doing a couple things. You're, um, you're helping them with their writer's block if that's a, a resistance and giving them ideas. Um, so having, and I have that as a, an email template. So it only takes me a couple seconds to customize the top and, and click send, you know, change the email address and click send. So, Templates are helpful. There's software call, called So Tell Us. You know, when your budget increases, that's something that you can automatically send people. It goes right to their phone. They click a button. They can do a video review. They can do a text review, and it goes right to the local directory listing. So in the future, you know, as the budget gets better, then then we can add tools like that. Well, I want to thank you guys so much for being on the call. We're going to have another one in two weeks. I'll send out a reminder. I'll send out this recording and, uh, and feel free to don't invite people to this zoom meeting, but feel free to um, share the link with other people. I'm, I'm really looking forward to this being a wonderful supportive group and, and helping out. Have a wonderful day, everybody. Thank you. Very good. Thanks, Jim. Thanks, Jim.